the stiffness stiffness is defined as the force upon deflection and the stiffness is rep represented by k is same as equal to force divided by delta in the case of spring the spring stiffness is normally expressed as newton per meter now same equation we can use to find out the stiffness in the axial component and in the case of torsion member suppose we have a force p is applied to a member which is under compression and let's say the l is a length and a represents the area in this case the change in length dl that is the deformation is given as p into l divided by a into e so by definition here the stiffness k in the actually loaded member is given as p divided by dl which can be equal to a multiplied by e divided by l so a into e divided by l represent here stiffness so we can replace this bar with the help of one spring and we can show the two forces acting on it that equal to the force p which one is a compressive in nature and this time the spring has a stiffness equal to k which is same as equal to a multiplied by e divided by l and we know here the stiffness is k which is p divided by dl so we get the same original equation so we have k which one is nothing but p divided by dl and we have k is equal to a multiplied by e divided by l is equal to p divided by dl so any problem we can convert in terms of a spring now this method is very commonly used in the finite element method and we have a deformation dl will be same as equal to p into l divided by a now this equation is valid till the proportionality limit that is on the y-axis if we draw the load that is acting on the bar and x-axis represent here the deformation dl then initially we have a straight line relationship between the load and deflection that is called as the stiffness so in this zone the material is elastic after that we have the yield will start so the corresponding to this point we have a strength and anywhere from origin to the strength point we can define the stiffness so strength is nothing but the maximum load a body can safely carry it before the complete failure on the first onset of permanent deformation where the stiffness is a proportionality between the load and the deflection assuming the body responds linear elasticity now this concept of stiffness we can apply in the case of torsion also if we have a torsion member and is subjected to torque t then the twist is given as theta is equal to t multiplied by l divided by j into g so stiffness in the axial member is defined as force divided by dl in the torsion member it is defined as t divided by theta which will represent by kt so kt represents here the torsional stiffness and is t divided by theta t divided by theta is same as equal to j multiplied by g divided by l so torque per angular twist is called as torsional stiffness and is given as j multiplied by g divided by l the torsional stiffness is the torque required to produce the unit angle of rotation the torsional stiffness is defined similar to the spring stiffness which one is the force required to produce the unit deformation here the product j into g is similar to the product e into i and j into g is called as the torsional rigidity and the product e into i is called as the flexural rigidity in the case of actually loaded member we have deformation dl is equal to pl divided by ae so p divided by dl will be the axial stiffness and is simply equal to a into e by l so we can represent here one spring and we can show the stiffness of axial is equal to k and we can write the value of k is equal to e divided by l and in the case of torsion also we can represent the torsional stiffness using a spring and we have to apply the torque is equal to t in that case we have torsional stiffness is kt is given as j multiplied by g divided by l so if we have given the 
three bar in series or four bar in series each of them we can replace with the spring and we know the property of a spring if the spring are in series then the resultant stiffness will be the obtained by using the reciprocal rule and if two spring are parallel resultant stiffness is obtained by simply addition so same concept you can find out here what is the equivalent stiffness in the case of shaft when they are in series or when they are in parallel so consider here we have a three shaft shaft number one shaft number two and the shaft number three and they are subjected with the torque e and this torque is equal to same as equal to t in that case we can calculate here the value of kt1 kt1 will be same as equal to g1 multiplied by j1 divided by length l1 similarly we can calculate here kt2 is equal to g2 multiplied by j2 divided by length l and kt3 we can calculate in the same fashion that will be equal to g3 multiplied by j3 divided by length l3 so for series arrangement the equivalent stiffness k equivalent is obtained by using the reciprocal rule so we have 1 upon k equivalent is equal to 1 upon the torsional stiffness of spring 1 plus 1 upon the torsional stiffness of spring 2 that is a shaft 2 plus torsional stiffness of spring 3 that is kt3 once we know the value of k equivalent then we can find out here the total deformation from end a to end b and suppose you come across a composite shaft that is a one solid shaft and one hollow shaft is kept between the two fixed rigid plate and then we apply torque in this case we can represent here the shaft one with one spring as a torsional stiffness equal to kt1 equal to g1 multiplied by j1 divided by length l length l is common to both and the second shaft we can represent here by another spring to whose torsional stiffness will be equal to kt2 will be equal to g2 multiplied by j2 divided by length l and if we have a parallel arrangement then we can calculate k equivalent is simply the addition of two stiffness that is the torsional stiffness of spring 1 plus the torsional stiffness of spring 2 and if you apply here torque then we have theta 1 and theta 2 are identical value so if the arrangement is series use reciprocal rule and if the arrangement is parallel then use the parallel rule to find out the stiffness and you can convert the given loading into the equivalent spring and you can calculate very quickly here equivalent stiffness and then you can calculate here the twist between point a and b in this case the twist is same for solid as well as for hollow shaft but for this one we have spring 1 and the spring 2 they are parallel for parallel you have to simply do the addition of two stiffness as far as the torsional stiffness is considered it is given as kt is equal to t by theta which is same as equal to j multiplied by g divided by l clearly from this one we have torsional stiffness kt is inversely proportional to length l that is the length l will be smaller than the torsional stiffness will be higher and if the length will be larger then the torsional stiffness will be smaller it means that for the larger pipe it is the twist angle will be larger value and for smaller length the twist angle will be smaller value since we have the torsional stiffness is inversely proportional to the length l we can claim here that the stiffness decreases with l for the longer shaft there is more twist for a given torque that is a less stiffness and if other aspect of design restrict the shaft length one cannot adjust the length to change the stiffness that is if you adjust the value of j and g then we cannot adjust the chain length l for a required value of stiffness secondly the stiffness is also depend upon the polar moment of inertia and the modulus of rigidity modulus of rigidity is a material property from the same equation of torsional stiffness we can conclude here the torsional stiffness is proportional to the modulus of rigidity g 
the stiffness will increase with the increase in the shear modulus because it is directly proportional and if the material itself is a stiffer that is a higher value of g naturally we have a stronger will be the shock because we have higher value of the yield stress in the shear and the shock will be stiffer and the stronger so higher value of g also indicate we have higher value of sys therefore the shock will be stiffer as well as stronger so this value will be higher then it will be higher strength and similarly we have a higher value of stiffness also a hollow circular shaft of inner radius equal to 10 mm outer radius equal to 20 mm and length is equal to 1 meter is to be used as a torsional spring if the shear modulus of the material of the shaft is 150 giga pascal torsional stiffness of the shaft in kilo newton meter per radian we have to find out we have inner radius equal to 10 outer radius equal to 20 so we have d1 is equal to 2 times of inner radius is equal to 20 mm and we have outer diameter will be 2 times of outer radius that is 2 times of 20 will be equal to 40 mm we have length l is equal to 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm value of g is also given that equal to 150 giga pascal we have torsion formula is t by j equal to g theta divided by l from this we can calculate torsional stiffness kt is equal to t divided by theta t divided by theta is same as g multiplied by j divided by l modulus of gt will use in mega pascal is 150 into 10 to the power 3 polar moment of inertia for hollow shaft is pi by 32 d 2 to the power 4 that is 40 to the power 4 minus d1 to the power 4 that is 20 to the power 4 divided by length l length l is equal to 1000 this answer will come in newton mm and radian is a default unit so let's solve this first we'll get a torsional stiffness equal to 35.34 is 10 to the power 6 will be newton mm per radian 1 kilo newton meter will be equal to 10 to the power 6 newton mm so we'll divide by 10 to the power 6 so we'll get a torsional stiffness kt is close to 35.34 35.34 will be kilo newton meter per radian a torque of 10 newton meter is transmitted through a stiff shaft m n o p as shown in the figure the torsional stiffness of the individual section of the length mn is equal to 20 newton meter per radian for no is equal to 30 newton meter per radian and for op is 60 newton meter per radian respectively angular deflection between the a and m and p we have to find out so this problem we can solve by using the torsional stiffness because each value of the torsional stiffness are given to us So we'll draw here three spring between M N N O and O P. We have torsional stiffness K T one is given as twenty. We have K T two is given as thirty, and we have K T three is given as sixty. Since we have a series arrangement, equivalent stiffness is given as one upon K equivalent. is equal to 1 upon kt1 plus 1 upon kt2 plus 1 upon kt3 that is equal to 1 upon 20 plus 1 upon 30 plus 1 upon 60 solve this you will get k equivalent so equivalent stiffness for series arrangement will come out to be 10 newton meter per radian so only torque acting is t and this torque is remain constant from m to p so, so by definition of k equivalent k equivalent is given as torque divided by theta between m to p so we have k equivalent is equal to 
torque is also equal to 10 divided by theta that is a twist of m with respect to p so twist angle of m with respect to p that is the total twist is given as one radian figure below shows here two torsion bars of spring of constant 2k and k joined together one being fixed at one end and other at both ends the torque is applied as shown in the figure the equivalent spring constant in these cases we have to find out in the first case the torque is applied at the free end and in the second case the torque is applied exactly at the, the section between the two bar now as far as the theta value is considered here the theta value at point a which one is fixed end so theta a will be equal to zero then at point B, the value of theta B exists. One, two variables are required for shaft one. For the second shaft, at point C, we have different value of theta C. This torque is applied between point A to point B to point C, that is remain constant. So one stiffness we can define for shaft one, second stiffness we can define for shaft two. So for shaft one, we require two variable one is theta a and second is theta b for shaft two we require two variable of angular displacement one is theta b and one is theta c and these displacement variables are different therefore the given arrangement represent here the series arrangement whereas in the second figure we have value of theta a equal to zero because of fixed end theta c is equal to 0 because of fixed end and the value of theta b exists. So again for shaft 1 and shaft 2 if you collect the variables then for shaft 1 one variable is theta a that equal to 0 second variable equal to theta b and for shaft 2 one variable is theta c that equal to 0 and the second variable is theta b. So from this idea of a displacement variable, one variable is zero, second variable is theta b, one variable is zero, second variable is theta b, both these are the same variables. Whenever we have a same variables, then we have a parallel arrangement. So you have to observe from the figure, if you are not able to find that the bar in series or it is in parallel then identify what is the variables required for shaft 1 shaft 2 if both the variables are same that is in the second case you have to conclude it is a parallel arrangement and for shaft 1 and shaft 2 we have different variables arrangement is series so we can replace this shaft with a torsional stiffness here k1 we have k1 is equal to 2k and k2 is equal to k now this one is series arrangement so we have 1 upon k equivalent is equal to 1 upon k1 that equal to 1 upon 2k plus 1 upon k take LCM that will be equal to 2k so we have 1 plus 2 and finally take the reciprocal we have k equivalent equal to 2k divided by 3 in the second case we have parallel arrangement so in this case we have a rigid support here we will modify this figure we will show here one spring and we will show the second spring so this one is same as k1 and this one equal to k2 where k1 is equal to 2k and k2 is equal to k because of parallel we have k equivalent equal to 2k plus k that equal to 3k in this question we can solve the problem which are based on torsional stiffness so in the series arrangement we are getting this value as 2k by 3 and in parallel arrangement that is in the second case value is equal to 3k so out of choice a b c c is the correct choice the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here